Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. Fellow Atlanta resident Ben Jordan is one of my favorite YouTubers. He also makes music under the name The Flashbulb. Ben made a video called Behringer, the edgelords of music production, that was critical of various aspects of the Behringer company. But for context, Ben has also made videos praising Behringer when it's done good things. It's fair to say that Behringer is a controversial company, but that's not really what this video is about. What I want to talk about is some thoughts that came to mind when Ben said this. Like this thing is indirectly marketed as a TB303 clone. It isn't a TB303 clone. Well, maybe, maybe not. There's no particular reason why it couldn't be. Now, if you look at the Roland TB03 baseline, it says that it uses Roland's advanced ACB technology. So this is using some sort of digital signal processing based emulation of the TB303. It's part of Roland's boutique series, and I suspect these all have the same computer guts under the hood. But looking at this Sector 101 project blog, where they did a teardown of the Behringer unit, if you take a look at the photographs, I see a lot of components that look like individual transistors or transistor pairs. So I suspect that this is pretty close to the original circuit. And I feel like the number of parts on the schematic is roughly on the order of the number of parts on the PCB. A little bit later, Ben said this. The same can be said for the Behringer Model D or the Wasp or so on. They're not identical clones, and they're really no closer in sound or functionality than what an iPad app can achieve trying to do the same thing. Well, it's true that the Behringer clone isn't an exact clone of an original Mini Moog. I would argue that it is a lot closer to an original Mini Moog than an iPad app could be, just because you can build the circuit. Someone posted a photograph of the PCB of the Behringer Model D to Reddit. And let's see, if you look over here, and let's see, I have four capacitors here, and I have five chips with six pins. So these are probably transistor pairs. So it looks like this is a standard Moog ladder filter. And I have this regeneration calibration pot next to it. So yeah, there's the VCF. There's no reason this can't be the mini Moog circuit. The main analog synthesis core is probably the same circuit as what's in the $5,000 mini Moog reissue that you would get from Moog Music. And if you just started typing a comment claiming that the through-hole version of a part is inherently better sounding than the surface mount version of the same part, let me save you some time right there. Now, if you're designing PCBs that are designed to operate up in the gigahertz range, then some layout issues can be very important. But with audio circuits, you can pretty much try a bunch of different PCB layouts, and they will sound the same unless you really work hard to do something really absurd. Now remember, I've just been talking about the circuit, the thing that makes the sound. There are, of course, other differences. The Moog unit probably uses better potentiometers, it has this nice wood case, it's bigger, etc., etc. Now, there is one particular sticking point in trying to accurately and perfectly clone an original Mini Moog circuit, and that's the Fairchild 726. So this is a little metal can with a transistor pair, and it has a mechanism in it to try to keep the can at a constant temperature. This is long out of production and fairly difficult to get a hold of. Fortunately, the 726 isn't actually part of the signal path itself. It forms the exponential voltage-to-current converter used in the voltage-controlled oscillator core, so it's something that can be readily designed around with a more modern transistor pair. Now, of course, the Behringer unit quite obviously doesn't have a real 726 on it. I do wonder if Moog designed the 726 out of the Mini Moog reissue, or if they have a stash of 726s somewhere that they're using to partially justify this price tag. If you have some idea on that, let me know in the comments below. Quick note before I go, 
be sure to go check out Ben Jordan's channel. He doesn't just have some of the best music production content on YouTube. He has some of the best scientific content on YouTube.